Hello, this is Kerry Shoes with MathWorks, and in this video, I'm going to cover the many ways one can average a signal, in this case, focusing primarily on time domain signals. So almost everyone, especially uh, every engineer at some point in time, has a need to average or smooth data. Uh, the simple everyday average, if you, we learned back in school in elementary school, was you add things up, add everything up, and then you divide by the number of things you have, and then voila, you have the average or uh, the slightly fancier term, the mean, the statistical term. Uh, now, what I'm going to do in this video is focus here on averaging uh, streaming time series. So that means we don't want to wait until we collect all of the data in, in order to compute the average. We'd like some intermediate updates to the average along the way as the data is coming in. And the approaches I'll show, there'll be no decimation. So I'm not replacing uh, 100 samples by one sample or uh, a million samples by one sample, whatever it is, I'm kind of uh, updating the average constantly as the data comes in. So every input sample is going to produce an average output sample. So that's the approach I'll be using in general here. Uh, there are many variants on the averaging process. And so that's why I'm, you know, again, doing the video on it to kind of explain, you know, the what and how of these and the why of these different variants. There's the running average, classical way, sliding window average, exponential averages. Uh, there's a dual mode average, which kind of combines some of the above. And then there's some twists on these averaging methods here, which are really, which really use the methods described above, and they're called spectral averaging and synchronous averaging. So uh, these two latter approaches are, again, the math is not new. It's just how and how we apply the math to that particular problem. So these could also be called like forms of vector averaging at the bottom. So let me, with not any more PowerPoint, I want to get out of PowerPoint and jump into an example in um, our tools here in, in uh, Simulate. So the first thing I want to start with is our running average approach, since that's probably the closest thing to classic, you know, just a uh, piece of paper, you know, calculator averaging. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the first uh, value that comes in, u of 1, and well, the average of one sample is just itself, so that's easy. Running average is one, is just equal to u of one. If you get two, the next sample in, well, you take the first one and plus the second one divided by two, that's that running average. At the you know third time step, it's the first three samples divided by three, and that's the average running average at the third time step, and so on. You could just keep extending that on. So that's a simple running average, and here's the way you could build that up in Simulink. Um, I've got something which just keeps adding up the sample. So this part here would be the numerator of these expressions. And the part down here is um, also, um, you know, in its own form here, an adder, except it's just adding up one. And we divide by that number. So that's our denominator. Okay. Uh, and th that ratio is our average. And that's pretty simple. Now, as far as what we're averaging in this case, it's really a noisy constant. I've got a constant one, and then I'm just adding some noise to it, a Gaussian distri distributed noise. And then what I show out here is at some point in time in the future, let's say 500 samples in or so, I'm going to inject uh, a level change to the signal. So in this case, I'm going to go from an average of one to an average of two. I'm just going to add one to the signal, so many samples in. All right, so let's go ahead and run this model and see what happens. I'm going to run it for 2,000 samples, and each sample is one second. And what we're going to see is here's the noisy input signal on top. You see it's centered around one for the first 500 samples. Then it jumps up by one and then with the same amount of noise. And what you see with the running average is it adapts really quick. It's got nice startup uh, properties. It kind of hones in on the one really fast. That's a great advantage of the running average, good startup conversions, as quite a bit of overshoot or undershoot it can have, but it's uh, quick to converge at startup time. But then you'll notice that once we get into things, it has very, once we go, that's going from zero to one. Once we go from one to two, 500 samples later, notice how slow it is to converge. And that's because, of course, our denominator here, 500 samples later, well, in this case, because one sample equals one second, the denominator has grown to 500. So we're just weighing that new pulse, that new level change we get at 500 seconds 
uh, we're dividing it by 500. So it doesn't have much impact. And so it takes a long time to converge on that one. So that's the disadvantage of the running average is it doesn't respond well to changes or level shifts in the signal uh, after you get out of the startup period, you know. So but anyway, that's a good start. That's that's uh, an averaging approach. It's very simple of implement. You, here I'm doing it in Simulink. You could do this in MATLAB very well, very easily. Um, easy to get your head around and it works. Okay, so let's let's just, we'll use that as kind of a benchmark method, running average approach. Next, I wanna cover the moving average approach, which is probably the most commonly used averaging approach out there. Um, what you're doing, it, well, it's very easy to explain probably with a picture, maybe more than, than words, but you're just taking so many samples, let's say 10, and you collect 10 samples, and then you just take the average of those, and you take the next 10 samples, take an average of those, so to speak. So let's just take a look at that. So we got the same noisy input signal here. Uh, it's a noisy constant, and with a step change into it, 500 samples in. And then we've got our delay line. Now that may be a little hard to follow here, but it looks like some kind of delay line. But if we look inside of this, you'll see how it's built up. And I'll just make this even larger so you can see it, get a better viewpoint. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 delay elements. And then there's a tap off of each one and we're summing those, okay? And what we're going to do then on that sum is if we're eventually going to divide by the number of samples uh, that we uh, summed, okay, to form the average. So in this case, I've got an average of 100. So I've got essentially 10 of these delay lines of 10 each, okay? So I've got a one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I've got all those delays. Uh, all of those, I'm summing them 10 at a time, and then I'm summing those yet again down here, and then I'm dividing by 100. So if you look down here, n is 100, 1 over n is 0.01. Okay, so that's, I just used the hierarchical approach just so I didn't have to draw out, you know, on a one flat level, 100 delays. I just broke it into 10 subsystems. Uh, you could do it any which way you please. In fact, there's much more. Uh, shall we say, concise uh, ways to do this, which I'll show you, but I'm just showing you the brute force here way right now if you wanted to form a delay line of 100, okay? So I've summed up all of them. I sum up 10 within, then I take those sums of 10, and I eventually I sum those up, and then I divide by 100, okay? And if we run this model, you'll see how it works. In fact, uh, just on the second trace, uh, in fact, I'll make this smaller so we don't have to have it over there. You'll see the noisy input on top, and then you'll see the average waveform on the bottom. Uh, now, in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five, because I have different uh, variations of the moving average implementation, which I'm overlaying on the bottom uh, set bottom axes, which you'll see they all overlay quite nicely. You can see that it adapts up to one. It slowly converges up. Then it you know, you know, there's no change to the signal. There's just noise. And then we get this step change up to a level two, and then it adapts up to two, and then we, you know, bounce around there based on the noise and the signal. Now, again, the approach I showed you here was rather cumbersome to actually draw out those delay lines. So there are better ways. Uh, one of the better ways is just to use one vectorized delay line block where you specify the delay of 100 in one block. You take the output, which is a vector here, Simulink, of course, understands the idea of vectors. We can turn on them so you can see the notation on the screen. I'll turn on signal dimensions. You can see that goes from a scalar one by one to a vector. I sum that, now it's back to a scalar, and now and then divide by 100, and we've got the average. So much, much easier than the first approach I showed you. And you get the same result. Uh, but again, it's, it's, you know, it depends on, you know, your exact needs. Now, there was one little tweak I made here and I had allowed direct, direct free through so I didn't have to incur a one sample delay if you don't uh, check that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's the only thing you didn't need to be aware of as far as non-default behavior of this block if you wanted to get it to work just like the explicit delay line uh, approach I created above. One could create call this approach here or the first approach I created up here. 
essentially an FIR filter. You know, you have a delay line, you have a number of taps, and then you do something on those taps. In this case, all of the weights uh, are applied are the same on each tap. They're basically 0.01, which is, again, the number of taps. Now, I could just describe this with an FIR filter block, and that's what I've done here. I just take the F, discrete FIR filter block. I describe a set of coefficients, which are just a bunch of 0.01s, 100, a vector 100 long. And that's one another way to do it. Um, another way to do this, a more far more efficient than the first three, is to say, uh, let's not worry about creating this long delay line with a bunch of taps. Uh, let's use a CIC filter, which is far more efficient. Uh, I've just got one delay of 100. Uh, I don't have a bunch of adders and multipliers. I just have two adders, one multiplier, and one delay block of one. And I accomplished the same effective thing. That's what's beautiful about this. There's so much redundancy in a FIR filter block where all of the taps are just the same. So much symmetry, so much redundancy that you can simplify that with a little math, creative math. Now, creative math is called a cascaded integrator comb structure. That's what this is called. You basically got your differentiator and your integrator separated by your weight and you get the same thing. So that's something to keep in mind. You can use that as your averager. Or in uh, Simulink, there's also part of DSP system toolbox. There's just something called a moving average block. And you can put it in sliding window mode, and it gives you the same thing. It's essentially this half hour filter. You just describe the window length and the amount of overlap. Okay. In this case, because I wanted maximum overlap, I just specified it as the, the length of my uh, delay line minus one. And if you wanted to run faster, you could put it in uh, code generation mode here. I'm just using interpreted and it was just fine. All right, so again, I'll run that one more time. You can watch it kind of progress live over here to the right. And those are the methods. Now you see, again, I've got all five overlaid. If you ever just wanted to concentrate on one of them, you could turn some of them off just by clicking on the legend and you could just focus on the one you wanted to focus on. You can compare just the ones you wanna compare. All right, next, moving right along, we've done uh, moving average. We have done the running average. Uh, do I want to say that? Sure, I'll say yes. Um, let's do now exponential, which is also a popular averaging method. Now, the exponential method is also a type of filter. It would be, you know, in the category of an IIR filter as opposed to an FIR filter, which was with the sliding uh, window averaging method is. And the classic way, the real simple way to implement an exponential average is just to, again, create something like an integrator structure where you get this feedback delay of one and a weight. And now in the pure integrator, you would just make this weight one. So the weight would effectively go away and there'd be no weight here. The weight would also be one. Now with an exponential average, what you do is you just make sure these two weights sum to one. So you would make this something like a number smaller than one, like let's say 0.1, and you would make this a number which is one minus that. So one minus one over n. So if you make this one over n, you make this one minus that number. So if it, this was 0.01, this would be 0.99. If this was 0.001, this would be 0.999. If this was 0.2, you would make this 0.8. And that's a very, very simple way. You could implement that and just you know, seconds uh, in any MATLAB, simulate any environment, you can implement an exponential average that way. And then if you were thinking about hardware, you could make this very hardware friendly by just creating bit shift versions of this. So make it all powers of two. You can make this like 164th and this 63 64ths or something like that. And so that you can all do with, you know, shift arithmetic. Uh, now, that is what you would call a fixed coefficient exponential averager or FIR filter, or I should say IIR filter. Uh, the, the, the better approach uh, as far as convergence uh, is concerned, a rapid convergence would be to use a dynamic and ex exponential averager. In that case, the tap weights will change as a function of time and converge to a steady state value. And that's what I'm showing here. Uh, so I've got the same kind of structure. I've got a feedback uh, kind of integrator structure where the weight is actually dynamically updating. And the same thing for the front end 
uh, of the input, I've got that weight dynamically updating. And of course, they both sum to one. Whatever I compute on the front end weight, uh, I subtract it from one, and that becomes my feedback uh, weight or tap. Okay, and this follows some you know, exponential averaging rule or law here in order to compute those. And like I said, they do converge to a steady state value and they will converge for a given n value here. They will converge to the same one over n and one minus one over n values used here in steady state. So this is the steady state exponential average fixed coefficient. This is the dynamic exponential average. And what you'll see when you run these is that they do behave differently at startup, but then they converge to the same steady state behavior. Again, the input on top with the noise, and then you'll see that the fixed coefficient exponential averages converges slowly uh, to the steady state value, whereas the dynamic one in red or and or blue, you know, they're both the same. If I take the other one off, um, you know, take the red off, the, the red and the blue here are the same. Um, they converge very rapidly, but you'll notice once you get uh, into uh, into the waveform, you know, much later in time, that they have the same slower convergence properties because now we're into the steady state weights here. We're not starting from zero effectively to adapt uh, the weights. And then there's also a a uh, shipping version of this block uh, from the again from the uh, DSP system toolbox called again the moving average block. It has two modes. It's got the sliding window mode, which I've already showed you, and the exponential weighting mode. Okay, and then there's help on these. I won't show you, but they explain to again how it works, which is essentially what I just showed you here. Uh, so you can you can build your own, uh, you know, implementations of these. You can build a fixed coefficient version, a dynamic coefficient, or use the shipping block, which does the same job. So those are the three mo primary modes of averaging I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm going to get into some other variants on how, what, here, here, where and how you could use these in a uh, follow-on video, uh, but I'll wrap up this video here for now. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, keep, keep, keep on tuning in. Thank you.